show reminder, this Sunday night, 7, 11, 6 p.m. Eastern, that is 6 p.m. New York time, the weekend wind down barbecue chat slash giveaway is on. This week, we'll be giving away some uh, gallery backyard barbecue swag. And look, we'll be talking Gravity Fed 980 and Master Bill Gravity Fed, so you definitely want to tune in for this. Guys, this here is the Gravity Fed 980 by Char Griller. Guys, my name is Tommy, and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue. If this is your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, so you get notified every time the channel does a future upload. It is greatly appreciated. So look, right off the bat, I gotta say thanks to Char Griller for sending me the 980 to review, unbox, assemble, and cook on. Today, what I wanna do is just take a first look, little walk around unboxing and assemble. Guys, and look, when I do an unboxing video, an assembly video on YouTube, I like to keep it simple as if you guys were doing it at home. All right, everybody, look, let's take a, a little look around the box of the Gravity Fed 980. We got digital temp control, the porcelain coated cast iron grates. We got an adjustable damper in the back. That is interesting. And hey, man, this thing is a beast at 251 pounds, although I found it OK to assemble with one person. So look, anytime I do these unboxing videos, I like to keep the production down. I like to do it as if you guys were doing it. I like to take it step by step with not too much fancy edits, this, that, and the other. Because, hey, I am just like you guys. I am putting this together for the first time as you guys are. So I feel this is always the best. And the first thing I like to do is just get everything unboxed. I like to get it out on a table and then get it set up for the uh, first step. Now, once you get the uh, hopper emptied and you get everything out of the uh, chamber there, it's really, it's, it's, it can be handled with one person. Like I said, everything is out on the table, ready to be, uh, to be moved on to the uh, next step. And basically, hey man, I did it myself. If you can't handle it yourself, then by all means, get that second person. Oh yeah. As you can see, I got Molly helping me. Oh, she does nothing. So as we take a brief look at the owner's manual, you can see it is basically a picture, right? It's picture after picture, step after step. There is no written manual. If you go from step to step, follow the pictures, you'll be fine. And look, you can always tell how hard something's going to be by the blister pack. You see we got mostly B screws. We got two wing nuts two regular nuts and a few washers, right? So you know right there that everything is gonna be threaded for you, which definitely makes the uh, installation, uh, the uh, put together, the assembly a lot easier. First up, step one is the grease management system. And basically here, what you're looking to do, it is six screws. Get those screws in only halfway in, because you're gonna slide your grease management on and slide it down. Oh yeah. Now look, besides those six screws, you'll have four more up on top. The only screws left are going to be the three screws each side for each leg. Guys, before I got going with this assembly, I just wanted to jump in here and comment real quick. I mean, this thing is huge, heavy. I mean, the heat assembly alone is mammoth. I mean, this thing is big. Not to mention, it is about 90, 95 out already, and it is only about 10 o'clock in the morning. But look, we are going to carry on. We are going to take this step by step, and hey, man, wish me luck. 
All right, as we finish the uh, step one, and there is your grease management system. Basically, you've put those uh, screws in half, so you're just gonna get it on, push it down, and lock the screws in. Oh, okay. that's easy. There you go. And from there, what you want to do is get your, uh, that is going to hold the grease tray in. You see it's notched out, so that notch is going to go over the uh, grease management system, get it locked in. And now we're going to go to our legs. We got leg 21 and leg 18. And that'll be the front side of the uh, pit. And basically what you're going to do is just get them screwed in very, very easy. Leg 21 will go up towards the control panel. This is the front of the pit. And yes, I do realize I got to put up that grease management. It is not locked in. I noticed that in the uh, edits. Oh, yeah. So look, from 21, you got grab a uh, leg 18, and again, you are at the front of the pit, and get that uh, get that screwed in. That's easy. And also, what I like to do is hand tighten everything. You want to make sure everything is tight, and just take note here: your small casters on your control panel side. That is the uh, front and back. And from there, we are going to move on to our shelving system. Man, this is just four screws, easy peasy. I like to hand start them and finish with a uh, handheld screwdriver because of the angle. Just like that. That's easy. Take note here on your small casters that go towards the control panel side. Make sure they're locked and they will screw in. One, two, three. And look from there, we will move down to the bigger wheels. Get your parts, and again, man, one, two, three. You can do a, a wheel, then slide it in, or slide in that bar, then do the uh, wheel with the uh, washer and so forth. The uh, cotter pin was about the uh, hardest thing to put in here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, As uh, Molly does nothing. There you go. And there's your locking lug. So that is a uh, that is a washer cotter pin. And then your locking lug. And of note, you want the uh, smooth side of the wheel facing out. You want the honeycombs facing in. Get those lockers nice and tight and you're all good to go. And look, from there, what we're going to do, we're going to get our front mounting plate on, little gravity-fed decoration. You're going to drop your four screws in. And just screw it on, man. That is easy peasy. And from there, we are going to lean this sucker up. One person is fined. If you can't handle it, I'd advise to get that second person. That's no big deal. Man, we are moving right along, and from there, what you want to do is get your uh, bottom box. This is your ash catcher. You want to get that screwed in. There you go. You want to uh, screw in those four screws, but only halfway. There you go. There you go. 
And from there, again, it just got clips on, clips in. Next up is your fan control, which was a little bit of a pitter for me. It was tight fit, so I had to put a little bit of hammer pressure on it. Hey, man, hammer at your own risk. I mean, so far, this is a, uh, it's a breeze, man. It is a breeze. Of course, your uh, screw in your little handles there. Why not? Here you go. And from there, we will move on to our front handle. It is two brackets. Now, look, this was a little bit of a pitta, not bad off screen. I used a little vegetable oil in there. And it helped it to slide in a little easier. Take note that there is a little notch inside that hole and there is a little notch right there in the handle. There you go. Line all that up and push it tight. Now again, it was a little tough for me. So again, a little vegetable oil handled it greatly. Oh yeah. And from there, we will move to the uh, rear of the uh, pit and we will get your little damper handle on. There you go. And look right here, I never found that little rubber piece in mine, so make sure you look good. It's gonna stop some airflow. I got a tight fit, but hey man, I'll just pick up something from Amazon, pull it off, and uh, just put it on, no big deal. This is only held on by four screws. There you go, no big deal. And from there, we will move on to the control panel. Get your two top screws in halfway. And from there, you have a little rubber dinket thing there on the control panel. You want to take that wire and slide it through. It's a little tight, but you'll get there. Hook those two screws on, make sure it's secure. Secure it on the bottom with two more screws. And from there, we will move on to our tool holders. I mean, so far, easy peasy. Now we will install our front shelf. Make sure those nipple kind of things are facing outwards. A magnetic screwdriver helps. You got two screws that'll hold it in. And that bottom one there is angled down to make it easy. Once you get both sides in, you'll uh, connect the uh, shelf. There you go, just like that. Once that shelf is connected, you'll have two more screws. You'll see it off film. I did it. And that'll basically uh, allow the shelf to move up and down and lock into place. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And I have to say, I do like the uh, little holes in the uh, shelf and the control panel and the uh, shelf on the bottom. Next, we go inside the pit. There's a little bracket there, which is going to hold your heat assembly. Two screws. From there, you want to get your heat assembly ready. You have uh, two brackets that will sit on top. Basically, two screws in. Easy peasy, man. Come on. Oh man, that thing is huge. <laughs> Guys, from there, we will get the heat assembly in the pit, man. And again, this thing is freaking huge, man. It just fits right in and also just fits on that, uh, fits on that little holder that you just screwed in on the side. And look at this thing, it's like a cannon. 
from there we have a, a shroud kind of thing that is going to distribute the heat evenly inside the pit and I hear this is one of the uh, great improvements of uh, this gravity fed 980 we got five shelves going in five grates going in So from there you want to uh, drop in your charcoal grate and follow that up with the firebox. Oh yeah, it's not, I mean, all in all, I mean, you know, I moved the camera around so all in all it took me about two hours. I think you can get this thing put together if you familiarize yourself with the steps in probably an hour or so. All the uh, wire connections are numbered, number them to number them and snap them in. Next, we'll move into our little protector. You do have to remove that one screw and back out two screws that are already in and just, uh, hey man, connect the wires and uh, protect the wires, of course. And from there, you'll uh, remove that little plate there with the wing nut and you'll have some wires in there. Pull those wires out. They connect where they connect. They can connect to nothing else but to what they're supposed to connect in. Oh, yeah. Once you get everything connected, put that little protection plate back on. Man, hey, my name is Tommy and we are going to have some fun with this Gravity Fed 980. A lot of comparisons to the master built Gravity Feds. So you're definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. So you get notified every time that the is channel. It. I have to say, overall, it wasn't really now, bad. I mean, there was really points. no written directions. Everything was picturized and everything was pretty... Uh, Pretty picturized, pretty good to exactly what you have to do. The legs were numbered. I showed you that. Uh, the other parts basically uh, stood out for what they were. Um, and I'll have to say, the, the one thing that jumps out on me is this thing reminds me of, like, say, like a Pit Boss 1600, man. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. I mean, it is heavy. Um, everything lined up. Just uh, it's insulated in here. I mean, the whole thing is built like a... Uh, tank when I get it in the uh, smoke shack behind me you see it there I'll get it in there maybe I'll compare it to the uh, pit boss as far as just the uh, just the build of, uh, you know just the uh, build of it um, but look that is it for this one man you want to hit that subscribe button ring that bell because you're going to want to see what I got planned for this puppy the master built 800 and yeah even the pit boss 1600 look i am going to roll my patrons and youtube join the members and until next time we will see you soon